Finally, the 100 day sketchbook tour is here. Hi everyone, I'm Marianne, and today we're going to be taking a look at the first 100 pages in my Moleskine sketchbook. I'm going to be walking you through each piece, all my inspirations, motivations, and of course, I will be linking all of the materials and supplies that I've used down below. And so with that, let us go on and take a look inside my brain, pretty much. Up, 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 up. Hold your horses. Before we carry on, I just want to let you know, I will be doing the full sketchbook flip through at the end and that is where I will be talking about the five key takeaways from this drawing challenge. Okay, so from here I'm just going to be telling you about my thoughts on every single piece from every single day. Carry on. Welcome, this is my intro page. It's basically a spot for me to write down some of the goals that I had for myself when doing this challenge. Basically, not to pressure myself too much, to remember to have fun, explore a bunch of different subjects. I think that's supposed to be me sliding down a nice happy hill with bunnies. I actually made this after I finished the 100 days, more so to set a precedent as to how I should approach the next 300 pages, since to be honest, the first 100 were kind of rough. But I guess we'll take a look and see how that turned out. The first day. I was actually sitting in my boyfriend's living room when his mom gave me a bag of crayons and markers and I had my empty sketchbook with me at the time, so on a whim, I just decided to draw for 100 days. Now days two and three, two, this was my collection of cups on my desk at home. I was also eating um, tuna toast. And day three, another girl laying in a meadow. I think you'll notice that that's going to be a common theme here. Day four, already I was not feeling it. It says, feeling really icky today, sorry. And <laughs> I think here I was just apologizing to myself because I told myself that I would be committing to this goal and so early on I was already ready to give up. I didn't feel great about that. But the next day, I bounced back, I drew some pothos leaves, my plant that I had sitting with me at home. It felt really nice. Nice and green, markers again. This was the Adult Swim TikTok challenge. And this page, I was inspired by Black Bean CMS actually. This is the only page that I used oil pastels. Day 7 and 8. I don't know who this lady is, but she looks nice. I did pencil crayon and Posca markers. This one was me. I did it with markers and pen. It was a reference photo that my friend took of me and I really liked the lighting in it. Day nine and 10. Again, no idea who this lady is. I just picked out some random colors and thus she was born. Day 10, however, something about lily pads. I don't know what it is. I just really like them. Days 11 and 12 were probably one of my most favorite. At this point, I still didn't really know what kind of subject I wanted to explore, so I kind of just drew everything, plus flowers. Days 13 and 14, I was actually camping at this time, and day 13 was one I drew during lunch, I think. We had ramen, of course. And day 14, I was at a family friend's house, and I was laying on their hammock in their patio, and they had a bunch of hanging plants, and it was just a really nice day out. Days 15 and 16, I was having some off days. Literally, brain fart on paper is what you're looking at right now. But of course, with markers, because they were really fun. Day 17, 18. Day 17, this was when that shy little frog audio was trending on TikTok, and I just imagined this really cute little frog scene happening. Day 18, I was exploring the idea of putting faces on vegetables, specifically beets. I thought they looked funny. Days 19 and 20, I was watching Howl's Moving Castle, and there was this scene that I really liked. But when I started drawing it, it just didn't really sit right for me, but I had to complete it anyways. Especially day 20. Last time I drew anime was probably grade 2. Yeah, I've evolved a lot since then. 
Days 21 and 22. Man, in the beginning, I really like these. Of course, a nice mushroom forest. And two, two little bonobos, I think. Yes, two bonobos. I love them. I love their lanky arms. Days 23, 24. On day 23, it's supposed to be me, but the face at the very top kind of reminds me of Cher. 24, little puppy, so cute, sitting on the beach. Again, I was kind of just drifting around, not too sure of what to draw. Days 25, 26. Around this time, I decided that I would explore more animal subjects. So I did a cute little ducky and some hydrangeas and a Doberman in the Ace of Spades. Something about Dobermans, they just give me a very stern, regal type of vibe, and I really like them. Days 27 and 28. 27, I picked off a random reference photo off of Pinterest of this guy jumping. I wanted to explore a bit more dynamic poses, and I thought this was a good one to try out. And day 28, another reference photo that I took off of Pinterest of just this girl DJing, but I decided to add a bit more color together. Days 29 and 30, more Pinterest references of women, but I decided to make this one sort of monochromatic. I was thinking of what Gemini would look like if it was people. And day 30, I can't remember if I was happy or sad that day. I think I was just in a mood and I just wanted to do shapes. Days 31, 32, I was exploring. I guess it looks kind of cool with purple and blue and everything. And 32, I actually had my boyfriend scribble some shapes onto the page and I turned it into a girl and a few snake? Dragon? Not too sure. Days 33 and 34, kind of funny. Day 33, I thought at that time, I was going to be graduating from college in the summer, but that page did not age well. But of course, it did capture how free that I felt in the moment. 34 was my interpretation of the tarot card of the lovers. I do practice tarot, and at the time, this card was really one that spoke to me. Felt very loved. Days 35, 36. I wanted to explore a more pen and ink type of situation, so I drew this little fairy sitting in the forest with her mushroom friend. This is not typically my style, but I thought it was worth exploring. Day 36, this is Mushies of the Month. If you can't tell, I really like mushrooms, both drawing them and eating them. They're great and they're good for you. I don't remember all of these, but I know that the skinny one in the middle is enoki mushroom and the one at the very top is oyster mushrooms. Days 37 and 38, I'm back to my regular schedule programming with the markers and pencil crayons. This is my friend Taylor, a photo that I took of her was of her smiling and I thought she looked really nice and happy there and I wanted to draw it. Day 23 was the two main characters of the Netflix show Young Royals. I wanted to draw them and let out <laughs> my feelings. <laughs> that series really threw my heart around. Days 39 and 40. Day 40, I kind of just wanted an excuse to use my new gold paint that I got and I just drew this girl with some rings. I wanted it to seem like her hair was glowing. Days 41 and 42. This is where I started painting more of my own reference photos. Day 41 was my tomatoes growing in the garden at the time. Day 42, this was a reference photo of these little white blooms that I saw on my walk. Days 43, 44, more gouache paintings. Just wanted to scribble. Of course, more lily pads. I think it's because I have an aquarium and I grow floating plants and I just really like how they look on top of the water. 45, 46, these were some spicy pages. I really like these. 45 was based off of that song, Forget Me Not by Patrice. Russian, Russian, I think. And 46, I just wanted to make a piece that was kind of complementary to page 45. Day 47, I think this is where my style started to set in. This was a brain dump page for me. I was walking home that day and I really liked how the trees looked against the sky, but at the same time, I couldn't get the things about work out of my head. Day 48, my friend gave me 
this pearl and flower anklet that I thought was so cute. Day 49, I guess you can see my mental state was questionable. I had a lot of questions, if you couldn't tell, and I just needed a creative outlet. Days 50 and 51, I decided to explore a little bit more abstract swirly type pieces with marker. I like how the swirlies turned out for this. In day 51, I actually did that one in gouache and the eyes were too watery. I messed it up, so I just decided to remove her eyes completely. I think it actually made the piece look cooler. Day 52, this was made with gouache. Funny thing is, I painted this because I had a dream that I was riding a white horse through a meadow and that I was taking selfie on the horse and the horse and I were like besties in my dream. So the next day I drew it. Days 53, 54. Personally, I really love 53. I think I call this piece intuition because it's as if she can see through nature and it's like nature is looking out for her. Day 54, just some black cats going trick-or-treating. Nothing more, nothing less, just vibes, fun time. Day 55, berries and cream TikTok was going wild and I just had this idea of what berries and cream look like in my head and this was it. Day 56. Day 56, my sister drew some squiggles on a page and I turned it into this really cool piece that I like. It's actually one of my favorite pages now. Day 57, 58. 57, not having a good day. I just went to mix a bunch of colors, put some trees, some eyes, call it a day, and I did. Day 58, I drew my desk workspace and I had a couple Swedish berries as a snack. Day 5960. I was watching Squid Games and Player 67. If you watch Squid Games, you would know she was the best. She's my favorite. Days 61, 62. This kooky cat is so cute, I saw it on Twitter. I think its name was Bigfoot Jinx or something. The photo of the cat was really cute. Day 62, some cats in a pumpkin patch cause it was spooky season. 63 and 64, I was exploring the topic of death. I was also watching the Netflix series called You at the time. And when I saw Love, I was thinking of that song where it was like, uh, love will keep us together because literally she'd do everything to kill, to keep her family together. Day 65 and 66, I wanted to do an eye study. I was really liking the feel of the markers. I also wanted to explore expressing different emotions with just the eyes. Day 67, 68, I explored a couple more tarot cards. I really like the sun card. That day I went for a walk and it just felt like I was a little cat and the sun was staring at me the entire time I was walking. Day 68, Ace of Cups. You gotta fill up your own cup before you can share it with others. I pulled this card during a reading and it was a good reminder. Day 69, I think the idea of graduating was really setting in and I was just really unsure as to what I would be doing next with my life. I kind of was panicking a little bit, but I was trying to make sense of what my next steps would be. Day 70 was absolutely one of my favorites. I think I called this one yesterday or tomorrow and I wanted to make it seem like instead of running away from her past, she's using it to help write her future. Day 71 and 72. Day 71, I think I was kind of disassociating that day. I was thinking about the housing market and the possibility of my generation being able to purchase a home. Hopefully that changes in the future. Day 72, 
I just wanted to do something squiggly. I drank some tea that day and I had a really nice nap and I had a cool dream. Day 73, during this time there were a lot of floods happening in BC. I think I was trying to process the fact that people were losing their homes and their houses were getting washed away and so I drew this to make it look like the house was running away from the water. Day 74, I just got a new blue turtleneck and I really liked it. It made me feel quite funky and so I drew this going with the flow. Day 75, 76. I like to think of it as this girl opening her inner third eye. 77 was another day where I wasn't feeling so great. It kind of felt like my insecurities were really haunting me at the moment and i noticed that even up to this point i was criticizing myself a lot for the pieces that i was creating and i had really high expectations set for myself so day 78 i kind of tried to get over that previous day and to cheers to the future day 79 endless possibilities this is another way for me to remind myself that I can move forward in any way that I want. And then day 80, I caught a cold and I was feeling a bit chilly. <laughs> so that's what it was. The page on the left was actually a bonus drawing. I just needed to get something out of my head. And it's basically a smaller flower asking a bigger flower if they're growing a bit too slow. Sometimes you just need a little bit more time to develop stronger roots before you can bloom. So day 81, a cat swimming with goldfish. Day 82, a self-portrait and butterflies to symbolize my transformation. Day 83, a girl sitting underwater with lily pads, kind of like emerging from the mud or the dirt. That's what I was feeling at the time. Day 84, now is the first day of your next life. This is Tokyo from Money Heist, and that season completely tore me apart. If you know, you know. Day 85, Christmas Grinch because it was around Christmas. Day 86, this was on New Year's and it kind of felt lame. So I just drew myself with my wine glass that I cheers with my family when the new year came in. Day 87, a girl with some snakes wrapped around her. And this is my favorite animal page. 88 and 89, I drew this boa. The colors, I winged it and made it up myself. I took a little bit of reference from Pinterest. Day 89, this is Daisy, slithering through the daisy grass. Day 90 and 91, I love these pages. 90, around this time, this is when I felt like my ideas were finally starting to flourish and that I could trust my creative brain to take over the pieces that I was making. This one was a really fun one. I really love Junji Ito and I was reading one of his Tomi books that I had. Days 92, 93, 92. This was a picture from a Monet book that I had, but I just did my own spin on it. Day 93, I was thinking about waves and how they touch the earth. And I just wanted to make it seem like they were hugging each other, the land and the sea. Day 94, 95, cultivating tulips, because I really love tulips and it really felt like my ideas were finally growing. Day 95, I just knew I wanted to draw a moth. The girl just ended up appearing after a while of drawing. Day 96, 97, one of the artists that I'm really inspired by is Miles Art. 
and I'm not sure if he's made something like this before. I just know that the empty head is sort of his thing. Day 97, uh, be not afraid. <laughs> I really like the idea of angels and so I decided to draw seraphim in my own way. 98, 99. Another artist that I was really inspired by is James Jean. He really likes drawing wavy sort of abstract imagery with people melting into flowers in nature. Day 99, I call this one the Three of Ravens. And finally, Day 100. I wanted to make this page seem like a culmination of my achievements and all of my personal goals I had set for myself. It's like this person is embracing the sea and the sun is shining down on her. As you can see, I still have quite a few pages left to go, but the whole point of me doing this drawing challenge wasn't to simply fill out 100 pages, and I'm going to tell you a bit about that while we do a full flip through. Number one, stop aiming for perfection. Prior to starting this book, I guess you could say that I had commitment issues in regards to completing art pieces. I tend to abandon artwork halfway through creating because I simply wasn't liking the direction. This is why one rule I set for myself was that every single page had to be complete. It didn't matter if it looked nice or not by my standards, I just had to practice finishing pieces. During the first 30 pages, I honestly had no idea what I was doing. This portion was also when I had the most criticism towards myself. In hindsight, it was totally unnecessary because I was just starting out after a long break and I needed time to explore first. This was a personal sketchbook and having complete freedom was a bit intimidating because there were so many options as to what I could make. My mistake was approaching this challenge with the idea of what a perfect sketchbook looked like. I ended up spending way too much time on some of these pages just for me to end up not liking them that much in the end. Pages 30 to 60, I think, was when I really started to gravitate towards certain media like gouache, pencil crayon, and marker. I had way less art block during this time because I understood that the focus was no longer on creating a perfect piece, but simply having fun and letting my mind run loose. This brings me to point number two. Art is supposed to be fun. Going with the flow and releasing control of my idea of the finished product ended up creating cooler pieces I wouldn't have thought of in the first place. I no longer saw some pages as ugly or bad, I just accepted that they were part of my learning process and didn't dictate the extent of my skill. Knowing to use the medium was one thing, but allowing myself to be immersed in the process of creation actually resulted in the best outcome. Try not to pressure yourself to stay neat and clean if all you're doing is practicing, because it's just that, practice. The most fun I had with some pieces were actually the chaotic, scribbliest ones. Point number three, consistency is your best friend. Before this art challenge, I had been practicing art on and off for over 17 years. It sounds like a lot, but I did it as a hobby for a majority of that time and didn't take it seriously until a couple of years ago. Honestly speaking, I've seen more improvement in my work over the 100 days versus the time I'd binge paint a few pieces in a year. Consistency is your best friend if you want to improve, and your perception of what perfect is depends on the standards that you set for yourself. Getting better at anything takes time and effort. A friend of mine once told me that you have to approach big tasks the same way you'd eat an elephant. You can't swallow it whole, you have to break it up into pieces and take it one bite at a time. And don't bite off more than you can chew, because then you'll choke. Of course, this is figurative. I hope you're not actually eating elephants. Anyways, my idea of an ugly page will differ from yours. We all see the same things differently. It's up to you to decide how you want to continue from your starting point. Because your starting point, good or bad, is just that. A starting point. You have endless potential to grow. And if you keep going at it a bit at a time, you'll get to where you want to be. By pages 65 onwards, I was genuinely happy with what I was drawing, and I embraced learning new things instead of fearing my lack of skill. I could refer back to pages 1 through 30 and remind myself that I've come a long way. Because I did. 
Point number four, you're allowed to take breaks. Burnout is no joke. Whether you're an artist in a creative block or you've been hustling, working consistently, and not giving yourself time to rest. Suddenly changing your schedule to accommodate a high energy activity could be really taxing. Personally, I try to turn off my brain when drawing so I can remain present with my work, but I found that when I'd stress over little details, filming and planning my drawings, I'd get burnt out really fast. Burnout is an indication that you're at your limit. It isn't healthy to force yourself through something if it's affecting every other aspect in your life either. Lastly, and most importantly, point number five, some obstacles are smaller than you think. At the start of this, I thought to myself, 100 pages is quite a lot. But once I was actually drawing the 100th page, I thought, that's it? It was a bit anticlimactic, but that just showed me that anticipation anxiety got the best of me in the beginning. Like approaching a big task, I took it a day at a time, and by the end of it, I felt ready to face whatever came next. I used to think in a way people would say, all or nothing, or go hard or go home, and truthfully, this mindset can be harmful. Striving for balance is the best thing to do, and a well-rested mind is a mind best suited to execute great ideas. Completing 100 pages was a big step for me, but I feel like I was meant to try this challenge so I can prove to myself that this is only the beginning of my creative potential. I really hope this inspires you to try the 100 day drawing challenge as well, even if you try 10 or 20 days at first. However, I must note that you are way more important than what you can accomplish or create. Those things wouldn't exist without you. So this is me telling you to take care of yourself first. Take it one step at a time. You got this. Thanks for being here with me. See you soon!